Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, August 16th, 2021, and today I'm going to be talking about the state of California, or now put the battleground state of California, as the recall election is just around the corner in just under one month. CBS News decided to work with YouGov to release their own poll from the state analyzing voter intentions and voter sentiment as it comes down to COVID-19, wildfires, drought, a number of things that impact California and primarily California alone, even though there are widely experienced phenomenons across the country, especially during the time of climate change, completely destroying many parts of this uh, world, to be completely honest. But what happens in California, what we are talking about today, primarily has to do with Gavin Newsom, but we will be also talking about the types of voter scares and the things that matter most to voters that might not necessarily be as important to national voters or voters in, let's say, Wisconsin or Massachusetts, right? So CBS News added in this poll, and you can see the very generic results that it shows that uh, one of the Republicans pulls ahead by 10 points. That's different from the Survey USA poll that showed the Democrat ahead by four points. And when I say the Democrat and the Republican, there are plenty of them. There are over 40 candidates on this ballot to replace Gavin Newsom. So uh, many of these people, if they were to end up winning the race, would only win by maybe a few percentage points and win with just 10 to 20 percent of the vote in its entirety. So by no means would they get a majority of votes, nor would they be chosen by the voters in a heavy amount, just more so out of luck and out of a plurality type of victory if we ever saw one in American politics. But for the regular question, should Gavin Newsom be recalled slash removed from the office of governor, the CBS news poll shows that no do not remove only takes ahead by four votes uh, by four percent amongst likely voters a thousand five hundred of them were polled by this uh, news company and it shows that this race is absolutely close you see, when you saw some of these early polls, they were very big indicators that the race had significantly narrowed up, but CBS News had finally released their first ever time polling this race. It was a major media company, and it was different from Emerson College or Survey USA or Berkeley Institute of Governmental Studies. This was one of the largest news networks in the entire country releasing their poll from this race, and it shows and confirms that every other poll practically has been correct, with the exception of Survey USA, that no do not remove is the favorite, but within the margin of error, well within the margin of some type of sense of competitiveness, especially for California. Because when you look at this race and you look at the history of the gubernatorial races in the state of California. Well, Gavin Newsom actually starts out in 2014, and now I'm not going to mention 2010 because he was not the incumbent then, but he was the lieutenant governor in 2014. I uh, ran in 2010 and won. Went on to 2014, and I choose 2014 because it was a worse year, arguably, for Democrats on the national level. But in California, you really didn't see much pushback. Gavin Newsom and Kamala Harris both won their races in 2014 by roughly the same amounts. In 2018, Gavin Newsom upgraded, ran from lieutenant governor to governor of the state of California, won with 62% of the vote against John Cox. John Cox is also on the ballot in 2021. So fast forward to 2020. Joe Biden wins the state of California by 29 points. So looking at 2021, did we ever really expect this race to be competitive? At least not initially. And the polling data didn't tell us that it would be. But this CBS News poll reveals a lot more than the rest of the data that has been provided to us. Because while many of these polls show that the numbers are fluctuating back and forth and that it has gotten much narrower. The no on recall has finally taken the lead back over yes on recall because of this CBS News YouGov poll. And you can take a look at a lot of questions that were asked when it comes down to this. So one of the first few things that they mention is the coronavirus. This was actually one of the main reasons as to why the recall effort gained such popularity. If you remember the French Laundry scandal, essentially this was Gavin Newsom imposing his own requirements for citizens across the state of California that they could not meet indoors or go to restaurants with X number of people without getting in trouble, without the restaurant getting reprimanded from the state and potentially getting in a lot of legal trouble when it came down to the safety and security and the health of the citizens of California. But then there were photos released, photos surfaced to the media that showed that Gavin Newsom was quite literally violating his own requirements that he imposed just a few days before. And it seemed that this was, you know, Gavin Newsom putting himself well above 
the average citizen, that he thought that he would not be, uh, not have to listen to the requirements that were set forth by himself and the Department of Health across the nation. It was a really bad look for Gavin Newsom, and it prompted this snowball effect towards this recall effort that surfaced and received the number of signatures required. Now, first, I will say that the number of signatures required for a recall is not at all an indicator that someone will, in fact, be recalled. In the state of California, Donald Trump received 6 million votes in the 2020 election. In order for a recall effort to occur, you need 12% of the previous electorate, which means that they just needed around 1.5 million signatures. If there were 6 million Trump voters, I can tell you right now, they easily could have gotten 1.5 million signatures, and they did. So that's why this recall effort is actually occurring. But just in around 18 months, there will actually be a general election, again, for them to vote on. This actually less than 18 months, if I'm not mistaken, way less than 18 months, if you're talking about the next time a November election will occur. Unless I'm completely missing the mark, it should be somewhere around 15, 16 months towards the next election in November 2022. So pretty much just looking at a lot of these questions, it circulated primarily around the coronavirus, but there were a number of other concerns discussed. And it says that the recent rise in states' coronavirus cases were preventable, and 72% of the state agrees. Now, that's not a good number for Gavin Newsom. We're going to go through each one of these and say whether or not this is good for Gavin Newsom or not. Then you talk about those who are unvaccinated. Now, this really is just more of a personal preference, more of the way that vaccinated individuals feel about those who are unvaccinated, and we can move on from that point. Not super important. Uh, you know, talking about what could have prevented the rise in the coronavirus, they say more vaccinations. Well, that's not necessarily the fault of Gavin Newsom, more masking or social distancing. I would also say that many other states with Democratic governors and Republican governors lifted up restrictions way earlier than California. Some California schools never went back in person. And, you know, even states such as my own Maryland, which is more Democratic than California, has gone back to school and a number of counties are expecting to fully reopen in the fall this year. I can't say the same about many counties in the state of California. So, you know, looking at the masking social distancing case, obviously more of it would have helped, but was it, you know, a case that Gavin Newsom just was lackluster in terms of the way that he handled it? Personally speaking, I know that restrictions wherever I was, you know, I traveled uh, to different parts of this country specifically on the East Coast, many states with Democratic governors, such as Virginia, or Republican governors, such as South Carolina, did not nearly have as restrictive mask mandates or social distancing, regardless of where you were. So when I look at this, I say, okay, for the perspective of a California voter, maybe Gavin Newsom could have done more. But to be completely honest with you, he probably did uh, pretty well in terms of the way that he handled the pandemic, at least for certain parts of it. And in terms of how long the restrictions were, they were a lot long, longer lasting than other parts of the country, which also fueled a lot of this recall efforts from Republicans that really did not want these mask mandates to be imposed much longer. Now, if you look at the way that people say towards businesses, should you mandate vaccines for employees? Yes, 67%. Okay, you know, you're starting to see that Democratic sentiment there. Healthcare workers, 69%, require vaccines for customers and indoor businesses. This is where you're starting to see that standard Democrat versus Republican divide. That's not bad for Gavin Newsom. He would love the standard Republican versus Democrat divide. And if you see here, this number is also very good for Gavin Newsom. In terms of handling of the pandemic, 60% of voters say that Newsom either did very good or somewhat good in handling the outbreak. And those who say somewhat bad or very bad, just 40%. That is a 20 point difference. Yet you already saw in Real Clear Politics that the difference here in terms of those who want him out versus want him in is just four points in the favor of those who want him in. And then they also ask, do you plan to vote? Are you motivated to vote? And you can see there's a huge enthusiasm gap here, an 11 point enthusiasm gap between Republicans and Democrats. And more Republicans are saying they will definitely vote in this election versus Democrats. Less than three-fourths of Democratic voters say they will definitely vote in this election. Over three-fourths of Republicans say they will. That is also important to note. As you can see, this race has gotten narrower, and that is important to point out. Because if the race is down to just a few percentage points, quite literally speaking, this narrow enthusiasm gap, as it seems to be put, five points and definitely will vote, 11 points and very motivated to vote, very well can make and possibly will make all the difference in this election. So here's the actual question that really uh, I think is very negative for Gavin Newsom. This question, should Gavin Newsom be recalled? 48% of voters say yes. 
46%, sorry, of voters say yes. 48% of likely voters say yes. So how do they differentiate between registered and likely voters? Well, I'm going to tell you now that Republicans are more likely to vote in this election. Older white voters, which are typically speaking more Republican, uh, are more likely to vote in these elections and are more likely to vote in elections around the nation. So the likely voters probably are the gauged interest of other polls and CBS News as to which demographic groups, which party registration will be likely to actually vote in this recall election. And as you just saw, the, the more enthused that the Republican Party is, the more likely they are to vote. So I'm assuming that for this likely voters column, they polled more Republicans than they did for the registered voters column because it makes sense. Obviously, if Republicans are fired up and ready to go about this recall effort and Democrats aren't, the more likely that it is Republicans are to vote than Democrats are to be in this situation. But regardless, even when you expand the electorate to registered voters, which is the standard rundown of that huge gap between Democrats and Republicans, that 30 points that we saw on the 2020 presidential level, 46% say they would still recall Gavin Newsom, which means that there are plenty of Democrats and independents that are crossing over to say they agree with the Republicans that this recall effort should move forward. And the reason why I say Republicans is because if you remember early on when this recall effort was earlier ramping up, you would actually see on the recall website that when you scrolled down, it would say funded by the California GOP or the person that was running it was the former chairman of the California GOP. It's no secret that this recall effort was primarily put forth by Republicans. I'm not going to deny or try to discredit the Democrats that took part in getting Gavin Newsom to a point of being recalled, potentially speaking. But you do have to understand that most of the people that support the recall are not Democrats. They're not independents, but are mostly Republicans, mostly Republicans. Just keep that in mind. So we're going to move on to this point and talk about why voters are actually voting in this recall effort. And it says here that 48% of them want to shake things up. And you know, this sort of reminds me of that saying that some people just want to see the world burn, right? When you look at an incumbent, some people are just inclined to say, for the hell of it, we want him out, right? May not necessarily actually disagree with Gavin Newsom. And while that may not be at all, and I'm not trying to insinuate that this is at all the majority or even, you know, a, a, a large subsection of the group, but more that just some voters there, as you can see in this poll, 48% of those who are voting yes on the recall are doing it to shake things up. 4% of them are even voting yes on the recall, not even to oppose Newsom and the job he's doing, but are just voting yes. There are people out there that just want to see some type of change in the government, and they don't really care how it gets there. And for California, it makes sense that they are primarily Democrats, because California, primarily speaking, has Democratic voters. And you can see here that to get a Republican governor is just 60% of the reason which means that many of these voters are Democrats. That gap between the 96 and the 60 probably are Democratic voters that are saying, you know, I don't want a Republican governor. I don't necessarily want to oppose the Democratic Party, but I want to shake things up. I want to change what's going on in the government. Maybe something better will happen. Maybe something worse, but I want to see it happen. And then if you ask voters, why are you voting no on the recall? You also start to see that enthusiasm gap resurface. Just 65% say they want to support the Democratic Party. Well, that's not exactly the energy that is required for Democrats to do well in 2022, especially if you're not seeing it in California. I can't imagine it's translating to other states where Democratic presence isn't as large, such as Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, key battleground states, but don't nearly have as much Democratic support which I can imagine means that the voters there that want to support the Democratic Party are less and less. But you can see here that some of those who are trying to get out the vote are trying to stop a Republican from becoming governor. It's that same sort of message that Democrats put forth, get out the vote to stop Donald Trump, to stop Donald Trump type Republicans, not necessarily just for Joe Biden. While I'm sure there were plenty of Democrats, and there were, the majority of Democrats were voting for Joe Biden, many of them were also voting against Donald Trump. And that's where you started to see that energy really come out from those who were vehemently opposed to the former president of the United States, which is exactly what you're starting to see here now with many of these Democrats saying, I wouldn't necessarily have voted before, but now that a Republican has a real chance of becoming governor, I'm absolutely voting to prevent that from happening at all. And then you can start to see here, you know, the approval rating of Gavin Newsom actually is quite high. 57% of voters say they approve of Gavin Newsom, yet 52% of voters say they want to keep him in office, which means that there are voters out there, and again, back to that point of shaking things up, that approve of Gavin Newsom, but don't want him to remain as governor. Quite interesting to see. 
And you can see here in almost every regard, except for crime and homelessness, and crime is right there on the edge of reaching a majority, homelessness is really low, that the approval of Gavin Newsom in the economy, wildfires, COVID-19, the outbreak, and crime are around or above the majority portion of the state. 40% though approve of Newsom's handling of homelessness. That means this is also something that a lot of people used to fuel that recall effort. And in those who feel risk from the wildfires, a lot and the majority of the state feels at risk from drought, from wildfires, you know, talking about extreme weather, impact of climate change, recognizing what's actually happening. Yet for some reason, these recall numbers still seem to be very bad for Gavin Newsom. When you look at this mainstream media company releasing this poll, they actually do pretty well in terms of them understanding and analyzing certain states. Releasing these polls just goes to show that in addition to UC Berkeley, in addition to Emerson College, in addition to Survey USA, that CBS News is confirming once again that Gavin Newsom is in a horrible position. That this race never should have been competitive looking at the recent election results, no matter where you look at for Newsom, for Biden, for Clinton, for anyone, for Harris right? No matter where you looked, this recall effort should not have even gone past where it was before at no, do not remove plus 16, 11, 13, 17. But then for whatever reason, and I think maybe the resurgence of COVID-19, maybe just public sentiment has turned away from Gavin Newsom. The yes remove still remains in the overall positive on real clear politics, not on Wikipedia. But this new poll still suggests that the numbers are narrow that the numbers are exceptionally close and that Democrats still need to heavily focus on this race. Because if they do not, if they let it just fall back and just pass on because it's California, right? When is a Democrat going to lose California, right? 2021 might be that year. In 2017, a Democrat won an Alabama Senate race and served through 2021. So for a governor to win as a Republican in California, do I think it's the likeliest thing to happen? No, I do not. But is it possible? You're talking about a 20, 30, maybe 40% chance at this point. If Democrats don't get their act together, they could very well have a Republican, a lame duck, yes, but a Republican regardless, in the governor's office for a year and a half. And I'm sure that they do not want to deal with that at all. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2021 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.